In our last Rabbids prototype video, we took a look at mostly surface level content. Since then, the prototype's active following has become more familiar with the build and its tools. Two of their most active homebrew devs, Made Goof and Drooly, have spent the last while patching it up to restore various functionalities. Thanks to their efforts, we're now able to access a number of previously inaccessible maps, some of which have been slightly modified to include concepts and mechanics that you wouldn't otherwise see. I know last time, there were a lot of people that wanted to see the famous War of the Worlds map for me 3. Now we have an accessible version of it, and yeah, this is pretty cool to try after all these years. Although, and you might have expected this, there's not much here. Running through the endless horde of rabid PNGs was pretty funny though, and the mecha firing off in the distance is very cool. The rabbits in which you fight won't do much unless you approach them first, then Havoc breaks loose. You can perform a ground pound if overwhelmed to temporarily push them back. Then there's your handy grapple system, which wasn't able to attach to the rabbits in the leak, despite being a feature in the trailer. Made a goof managed to restore this function, now only the big rabbits can be grappled. Twirl them around by spinning the left analog stick. It's fun to take out multiple rabbits this way, but it's awkward to control. Attempting to make ground while doing so often results in the grapple disconnecting. While going through this environment, I decided to compare it with the trailer. And in doing so, I noticed that the rabbits there had a few unique sounds. Sadly, these sounds have not been found in the leak, and while plenty of unused sounds are available in the final game's files, these are unfortunately not. There's a bit more to discover in the exterior map from the last video, so here we are once more. This map was recently discovered to be the game's second world. The first world, unfortunately, may be lost to time. Someone pointed out last time that Rayman losing his clothes, then dying after a second hit, is a reference to the arcade classic Ghosts and Goblins. My speculation is this build was compiled as an internal reference, and the two-hit formula was a joke. I doubt this version of the game would have finished with that in place. Partial nudity aside. Might as well mention another function. See this character that appears when you hold the first person button? That's Monique the Fairy, Andre's girlfriend. You remember Andre, from Rayman 3? Also, you might have noticed the purple orb that frequently hovers around Rayman? That's supposed to be her. She's meant to serve as some sort of guide for the player, but it seems like her functions weren't implemented yet. Alright, so in regards to the exterior map, I happened to miss this sparkling log the first time over. Hopped inside and... well, seems not to load in properly. But moments later you'll find yourself next to a goth clone of Rayman, which mimics your every move. You'll both need to use your grappling hand to simultaneously open the door. Very cool! The segment ends here as goth Rayman vanishes. Let's check out the top of the spore tree. This is taking a while. What if I... Ah! By pressing the same button responsible for flying the eagle, in this case RT, the spider moves faster. No! On top is this big radar tower. Inside are some of the rabbit's mini robots. These things shoot electricity at you, all the while giggling, similarly to what we've heard in some of the promotional material. Wait, what? How did you get in here? So what you have to do is pull this bridge using your grapple in order to get to the next room. In the prototype, the doors aren't locked, which means you can open them by jumping into them from the main platform, rather than pulling the bridge towards them. There's a small base here where some rabbits are guarding a key. I underestimated the spider. As it turns out, it can actually hold up a charged shot that homes in on the closest enemy. Same goes for the scooter. Oh yeah, and speaking of which, the scooter. Thanks once again to Made a Goof for helping me to restore this in the build. This level, exterior, has been shown with the scooter before, so it's only fitting that I show it off here. It runs a bit slower than the UFO in this state, which was apparently using a buggier code of what was meant for the scooter. It's all a bit messy. Oh, it's these creatures again. These are apparently lums, held in captivity by the rabbits. You know those yellow lums, round orbs of magical energy? So the lore says, lums that have swallowed some kind of relic have grown and turned blue. You are meant to collect them to unlock goodies, 
like outfits. Rayman can free them by attacking rabbits, or by completing objectives. Assuming they'd also be found in cages as well, seeing as how there's a lot of unbreakable cages sitting around the prototype. Wait, hold up. Objectives, you say? What kind? Well, it turns out this rabbit's ship was supposed to hover around this area. So here it is, in all its glory, dropping down wave after wave of rabbits to fight. Defeating big ones will free alum. Once the big rabbits stop spawning, you can then take out the ship to free another. Recently, Drooly discovered a hidden scene where a rabbit is beating up alum it's captured. It then notices you and takes off on a UFO. You're able to catch up with it by using a power-up that allows you to run much faster, similar to what was seen in that trailer. While giving chase, the rabbit will toss bombs and launch missiles at the player. Imagine what this would have looked like with a little polish. You know the drill by this point. You've probably noticed that in some of my footage, Rayman wears different outfits. Might as well demonstrate this further using a map called Frank Work. It's a familiar place if you've seen the pre-release screenshots. In the original leak, this was disabled, but thanks to the community, you can now swap between five unique costumes. Not sure how in-depth this would go later into development, but as of this prototype, outfits serve the purpose of immersing rabbits in a hypnotic dance trance. Each outfit plays a different song. You're supposed to follow along with the beat while a juice meter fills. Once complete, Rayman can escape the trance as the rabbits continue dancing. It's a great way to break free from an uncomfortable situation. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, couldn't get the juice meter to show, but I've got a working video from Made to Goof here. World 3 Exterior. Self-explanatory, it's the third world, and there's absolutely nothing else interesting going on. Don't mind me. Now, who is expecting to find a door on top of this thing? Turns out that old map called Bunny Robot is the interior of a bipod. The transition doesn't usually work, but thanks to an edit by Made a Goof, here it is. I always figured this map took place inside one of the mechas. You know, there's a surprising lack of those in this prototype. I'm really sad we didn't get this game. Magic Forest. Just a really pretty, detailed, leggy forest map. This could have been designed for something important, like maybe the start of the game, or a fairy shrine, who knows. Modules Atolls. Oh look, another pre-release screenshot level. Hey, a shark! What's happening? Sky Shark? We have liftoff! Yes! Eat the seagull! You can open the shark's mouth, which allows it to catch a rabbit. It'll then just flail around on top of it until you press the start button, where the rabbit... dies, I guess. The shark will get stuck if you end up on land, but you can bump it forward a smidge with the swim button. Creatures Test. You can find the anglerfish in map 3 of this hub, but unfortunately, as you can tell, it's not underwater. This is the only map I could find with one available. Made a goof recorded this clip of the stage filled with water, so you can see it here in action. The anglerfish is cool because it lights up the surrounding area, making it a great choice for exploring depths below. In the same hub, Map D, you can find a rideable bat. This creature performs like a smaller version of the eagle. It seems easier to control, but that might be the smaller wing size throwing me off. The Race of the Dead. Now what do we have here? A minigame that made it into the final? Here it uses rhinos instead of the warthogs. In early interviews, it was confirmed that minigames or trials always had a presence in Rayman Raving Rabbids development. This would be one of those early examples. It was probably meant to connect with an objective, instead of being an isolated situation like in the final game. And there he is! Never seen him so close before. New course. Here's a rough forestry map which seems to have been a similar racing trial to the last one. It later shifts into a rocky swamp environment. Temp Benga. This one spawns you out of place. Upon heading to the main area, I notice something moving away from it? What the heck is that thing? We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots from the west. Oh, it's the Warthog. So at this point, the model was at least available. Not much else on this map except... Him. <laughs> Test Joel. 
This map features tiny warthogs being smacked around by a rabid. The only thing that can stop them is... this big white ball. Exterior graph modules. I found pink! It's on the spider robot, and it has a carrot launcher. Time for a ground pound. I'll take that. Notice how pink got back on its spider? Pink will always return to it if possible. The spider is used by Pink to fire at Rayman. Don't let it. Show the Pink Menace who's boss. While doing so, you'll find its fluffy exterior begins to fall off, revealing its robotic insides. After enough damage, Pink will explode. See how Rayman's eyes are tracking an incoming rabbit? This is a cool feature, one that helps give the player insight to the location of their enemy regardless of where the camera's directed. Oh my god, what happened to its mouth? Mind not staring at me while I do my business. Please. Oh lord, what's happening? A couple neat mechanics here, including some gears, which you're gonna see a lot of for the next while. BRK Ride Pedestrian. Did that translate properly? No pedestrians here. But a lot of gears, and a couple rabbits. Good lord, creepy! What follows is a small area that seems to have been built for testing the rabbit's dodge ability. They avoid almost every one of my shots here, which in most maps they usually just submit to. Some cool platforming challenges ahead. There's one part where it's implied that I should use a carrot launcher against a nearby rabbit. Next there's a segment with timed switches. Get them all in time for... seemingly nothing? There's this giant gear the player can grapple onto. Swap to a higher hook on the gear in order to turn it with your own gravity. Lastly, there's this launcher pad. It puts Rayman in the free-falling position, similar to those mini-games in the final. Test Seesaw. Spawns in the wrong place. Definitely check this one out, it's got loads of playable platforming bits. There are pendulums, and plenty of grapple hooks, which seem to be replacing purple lums in this game. In one area, you're supposed to free this cage behind a gate by standing on a rotating platform. The last thing I found was this giant clock. While a time-shifting mechanic would be awesome, I'm guessing this is simply another test for the grapple mechanic. I hope I'm wrong. Tower City in the Clouds. This place has a ton of windmills and windmill-related machinery. Even this little island with its own dedicated windmill. Then there's this nearly untextured city below. Not much of interest here. There's a few rideable creatures available. Take the eagle if you want a good look at it all. There are a few incomplete platforming ideas here, most with a high risk factor. Hotspot City Test. You can grapple onto this zipline to slowly but surely make it to a nearby spore tree. Once you're there, you'll find certain areas that lock the camera, directing you where to go next. There's about 30 seconds worth of spore swinging fun until you encounter a dead end. In another part, there's a UFO in a tube. Unfinished travel mechanic, perhaps? Test Jeff. Here's another hub with multiple unique areas. In one of them, there's a rabid UFO flying around. This lava-filled building is full of purple lum mimicry. There's what seems to be a broken conveyor system? Well, that's creepy. These inward collapsing platforms are neat. Oh, I've played Super Mario 64 before. I don't think you can get this thing traditionally. When you no-clip know over there, it simply disappears. Test level. Okay, this is cool. It's a rabid base with plenty of laser traps, empty prison cells, and more grappling. I especially love this room with the spinning pieces that draw paths of light when a connection is made. Playtest A1. Nice laser trap. Whoa, shifting floors? There's no end to this wackiness, is there? Alright, this should take me to the next area. Oh my god, Rayman! Fate confirms it. There is no end to the wackiness. Grenade room test. Caught me prepared. Where are you going? Some violence later. In the middle of this map, there's a small locked-in area where grenades spawn. 
That's right, there's grenades in this game. Rabbits can use them, or you can pick up and throw them yourself. They go off after 10 seconds. On this map, I wasn't able to use them, but I could in the map called Dungeon Sun. This map has an ambient red glow to it. There's this one impressive spot where I think the intention is for the rabbits to ambush you for this carrot. Seeing these little puzzles in their test maps gives me a lot of crushed hope. It's up to the community now. Bomb room test. More mechanics, nothing you haven't seen. But I did witness this rabbit performing a rare charge attack. Test our nod. Here we have a room with rabbits and destructible cover, which can only be destroyed with the carrot launcher. This should look familiar. It's a precursor to the bunnies are slow to react minigame. Use Rayman's position to guide the ball. It's a bit jank. Not easy to get it through those tiny spaces when the player speed isn't fast enough to rotate the board in time. Test minigame. Spawns in the wrong place. Here's a bunch of wooden Rayman silhouettes. Shoot them down with your carrot launcher. Reminds me an awful lot of that minigame in the Game Boy Advance version, but it could be a coincidence. Dev Rabbits. I guess this was just an in-development map for the game. No rabbits here. The Benjamin map works now. This reminds me of the Pride Lands in Lion King. Is it just me? Beautiful, but empty. Same can be said about Tour A for the most part. Certainly interesting though. There's a bunch of what appear to be giant watchtowers. Something along those lines. Doesn't seem like the sort of place you'd voluntarily live in. So in that case, I don't think it's a city, but who knows. Temp Adrian. Spawns in the distance, but here are three untextured human models on a tree piece. I assume the name Adrian in the map refers to Adrian Brody, who played a character in the King Kong film. The game for the movie was made by the same studio, which is why there are so many assets borrowed from it in the prototype. Placeholders, generally. So those are the prototype maps, explored with help from the Rayman community. I'm sure there's still more to find within the files, but by this point we've covered most of it. In development, an executive from Nintendo approached the Rabbit Studio. He informed them that their plan for the game was far too ambitious. A strong suggestion was given for them to reduce its scale in order to meet deadlines. While it's easy to be frustrated that the game we wanted didn't come out, I know exactly what was meant by that now. There's a lot of neat stuff here among its many spacious environments, but it's in a state of concept, and for a scheduled release, it was definitely too ambitious. Now, with the source code available, you might be wondering what the future holds for this thing. Well, what we've been able to pick apart from Rayman are mostly just bits and pieces. The fans are more than capable of doing something, some efforts are already on the way, but restoring the entire game sounds like a massive headache. Not all of its contents need to be used, though. Perhaps the community can scale back the project on their own, in a way that doesn't completely uproot the experience. I'd like to personally thank Drooly and Mei Goof for their efforts, along with the rest of the Rayman modding community involved with this thing. Mei has a Discord server for the prototype, link in the description if you're interested. They're also working on a Tour of Worlds patch for the game, so keep a lookout for that on their YouTube channel. So, what do you guys think? Can the Rayman Raving Rabbids prototype be redeemed? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from me in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time!